Can I see you? No, no, no.
We thank Thee, Lord, for leading us together. We thank Thee, Lord, for prospering our plans. For Thou alone hast led us to this day, and so we pledge in thy hands. Now with the Lord we'll walk this road together, and side by side we'll share the Lord as one. Yes, faithfully, side by side until our journeys till our journeys still side by side until our journeys done to thee we pray that thou wouldst lead us onward through joy pain. Where'er you'll lead, we'll go. Help us to trust in thy almighty guidance. A path before us thou alone dost know. Now with the together, and side by side we'll share the Lord as one. Yes, faithfully through any sort of weather, still side by side until our journey's done. Still side by side until our journey's done. We humbly kneel and ask for help and wisdom to make right choices every passing day. With on the straight and narrow way. Now with the Lord we'll walk this road together, and side by side we'll share the Lord as one. Yes, faithfully, side by side until our journey's done, still side by side until our journey's done.
everyone here. Thank you for coming from near and from far. If you would please stand this morning, we're going to pray. <clears throat> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus this morning, and we just want to thank you, Lord. You are, you are God, for you have created us, and we have not made ourselves. We are here this morning to witness this marriage between these two people. And Lord, if it weren't for you and giving us this life and giving us relationships and giving us marriage, we wouldn't even be here. So we want to stop and acknowledge and thank you and praise you, Lord. Lord, we invite you to come and be a part of this ceremony that you may be glorified. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everyone can be seated. Amen. 
If you would take your hymn books, or I believe it's in your in your handout, Come Gracious Spirit. Hymn book is page 155. <coughs> So now take your sheet and turn to Together We Seek Thee. This is not in the book, but it is in the sheet.
All right, well, good morning. It is good to have everyone here, especially Benjamin and Sue. It's good to have you two here. But the rest of you, you guests, it's good to have all of you. Thank you for joining us for this very special occasion. We've waited a while, we've planned a while, we've uh, anticipated a while, and now it's finally here. So it's, it's uh, very good to be here. And I don't know, when you got an invitation to this, as guests, maybe you wondered, why are they inviting us? Are they hoping for more gifts? Are they wanting, uh, yeah, what, what's, what's their goal here? Maybe they're wanting advice. Maybe they say, hey, we hear you've got some wisdom to share. I wonder what that kind of wisdom would be if we go around the room here today and everybody were asked that question. What advice would you share with Benjamin and Sue here today about going forward in marriage, how to have a happy marriage, what would you say to them? I'm, I'm expecting probably some of you would say something like this, put the other person first. Put, if you're the husband, put the wife first. If you're the wife, put the husband first. Is, is that good advice? Well, it's, it's probably well-meaning advice. I don't think it's quite right, though, and I'll tell you why. There was a girl born back in early 1900s, 1902. Some of you have probably heard her name. Her parents named her Christmas Carol. She was born during the holiday season. Uh, Miller was their last name. 1902, she, was, uh, she grew up in this Christian family. And uh, at age 16, she met her future husband, Norman Hostetler, and they got to know each other, got to like each other. Eventually, they got married about five years later. She was 21 at the time. And it was, of course, a beautiful wedding, beautiful marriage. They had a nice house to live in. Their, their, their employers helped them out with buying some nice furniture for this new place where they were going to live, and they settled in there. But see, back during their courtship, they had a conversation. And Norman shared with his uh, uh, bride-to-be, uh, Carol, that he was called, he felt called to be a missionary, called to be a missionary to India. And he says, I really feel God wants me to go to India as a missionary once we're married. Well, Carol didn't feel that call, but she says, but I love you, so I'll go with you because you are going, I'll go along. And they made that commitment to go to India as missionaries after they were married. As after they were married, though, the house they were living in felt really good, and the furniture they had was really nice, and the dreams that they, they were, or the, the things that they were doing now just felt so right to stay. And so she talked to her husband and said, you know, I, I never really felt the vision. Maybe we could just stay here, and we could be supportive of other people who are going to the mission field. Well, they wrestled with that and finally decided, okay, we'll stay here in America and enjoy life instead of going where she felt, where, where they had felt called to go earlier. And, uh, but you know, as time went on, he was working, working in a job, I'm not sure, but I think it was maybe construction, and he got too close to a power line and got shocked and electrocuted and killed 26 months into their marriage. 26 months to the day later, he was dead, and she was heartbroken. And she looked back at that commitment they had made to go to India, and she says, if only we could go back and redo it. She says, if I, I would so gladly go to India now if I could just have my husband back, if I could just have Norman back. Well, you know, that was a wake-up call, a shake-up in her life. And she made a full, more full commitment to the Lord Jesus after that uh, that, that event, that tragedy. She went to Bible school. She uh, eventually got married again. This time it was, it was to a man with the last name of Kaufman. She became Christmas Carol Kaufman. God used her. She, she wrote a number of books, Light from Heaven, Hidden Rainbow, For One Moment. Maybe some of you have read some of those books. But they were useful in building the kingdom of God and pointing people to Jesus Christ. So when I say don't put each other number one, I'm saying put Jesus number one. Let Jesus be number one in your life. More important even than each other, put Jesus number one. You say, who is this Jesus who wants to be number one in our life? He is a king. He's a great king. He came to this earth 2,000 years ago, claimed to be something pretty special. The son of God who created this entire universe. People challenged him. How do we know this is true? Can you prove this to us? Give us some evidence. Jesus said, well, I'll tell you what. If you kill me, 
I'm going to rise again. Of course, that seems like a preposterous claim, but they did it anyway. They did kill him. He let them kill him. Three days later, he rose again. He proved that he really was who he claimed to be. And so he is still a king, and he still has a kingdom, and he's inviting people into his kingdom to be a member of his kingdom. It's a great privilege to be a member of his kingdom. If you're not a member, I would like to extend that invitation. If you wonder, well, how do I become a member? Turn to that last song we sang. I didn't know we were going to sing this song this morning, but this one, Together We Seek Thee, start about verse 2, and it, it, it gives you a really clear presentation about why we have a need of Jesus and how to yield to him in a very brief way. And uh, just it says, We've broken your law, but in goodness thou leadest all men to repent through faith in the Savior, the Son thou hast sent. That's the Son, Jesus. So put Jesus number one in your life. And secondly, each other. And thirdly, yourself. That, that song, the little song, children's song, Jesus first, others next, yourself last, J-O-Y, joy is, is spelled with that acronym. It's a, it's a good model, even if it's repeated a lot. We're going to read from the Bible here, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. I have some verses here I'd like to read. Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 through 8. This is a passage that lists a number of activities that we as people go through in life. 28 different actions that this passage talks about. And it says there's a time to do this and a time to do that and a time to do 26 other things. And my question for you as you're listening to this passage being read or following along if you have your Bibles, I'd like you to ask the question, which ones should we focus on in a wedding sermon? There's 28 of them to choose from. Is there, which, which one would we talk about? So you listen. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 to 8 says, To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. So I don't know what came to your mind as you listened to that list of 28 actions what should we focus on when it comes to a wedding message? Maybe the one where it says a time to love. That seems fitting. Or maybe laugh or even dance. You know, some people do that uh, at a wedding service. Uh, probably won't be doing much of that here. But uh, the, uh, a time to embrace, maybe. A time to refrain from embracing. Maybe that's what we should be preaching about this morning. How about this one? Those who have been married before, you could probably relate to this one. A time to keep silence and time to speak. Is that part of married life sometimes? I suppose all of those would be appropriate in some ways and some messages. But there's one that grabbed my attention. You might be surprised. It says a time to die. Did you know we all have a time to die? You know, we're all closer to that time to die than we've ever been before. You say, that's kind of a morbid thought for a wedding message. I mean, you know, we're here to rejoice, you know. So what are you doing, preacher? You're making us think about something unhappy, something devastating even. And in a way, that's true. Death is devastating. It's devastating to married couples when one of them dies. Uh, there was a famous poet from, from the 1900s, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, wrote many poems. But one of the other things that maybe you didn't know about him was that he was also a grieving widow at the end of his life. In 19, 1861, toward the, it was right toward the beginning of the Civil War, his wife Fanny, she'd been married, they'd been married 18 years. She was lighting a candle and some hot wax or something dripped on her dress and caught that dress on fire. And she started screaming. Her husband came running, tried to smother that fire with a blanket. That didn't work. Finally, he just threw his arms around his wife to try to put out this fire and he himself was burned very badly. He, and, uh, and eventually his face was scarred up and it was, it, 
very much disfigured him, but she was burned so badly she did not survive. He was burned badly enough he could not go to the funeral. And as you can imagine, this was tragedy beyond anything he could ever imagine. He wrote a letter to one of his relatives shortly after that. He says, after what my eyes have seen, I don't know how I'm even alive. But then he goes on to say this, but I'm learning to be patient, if not resigned. I thank God every hour for the beautiful life we had together and that I loved her more and more, <clears throat> more right to the end. You know, when someone has lost a loved one, the hardest time for those people often, by testimonies I've heard, are the holidays. Other people are getting together, families are getting together, but the one you want to be with is not available to be with you anymore. And he writes, he wrote uh, around Christmas time of 1861, later that same year, he wrote this little phrase, how inexpressibly sad are the holidays. Another year went by. Again, the holidays rolled around. And he says this, a Merry Christmas, say the children. The children are saying Merry Christmas. But he said, that is no more for me. And then the next year, something else happened. His son joined the, the army, went to fight in the Civil War, and he didn't want this to happen. This was disappointing to him. His son was injured in a fight, and he, was, uh, he came home very badly injured, even paralyzed, I believe. And so tragedy after tragedy were happened in Longfellow's life. But uh, at, uh, at the end of the year, in 1863, he wrote this poem. Maybe you've heard of it. I heard the bells on Christmas Day. Listen to... Listen to what his thoughts were. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play, and mild and sweet their songs repeat of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And in despair, I bowed my head. There's no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. But he didn't stop there. He kept on writing. Listen to this verse. Then rang the bells more loud and deep, God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail, with peace on earth, goodwill to men. Now, that story, I don't know what you think about when you hear this story of Long, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow and the grief he was going through toward the end of the last part of his life. I'll tell you what goes through my mind. I tend to get fearful. I tend to even choke up with fear sometimes. If I'm, at, least, at least I'll say it this way. I'm tempted to sometimes. What if that were me being deprived of companionship? You know, and what if my wife were to pass away? And so, you know, she goes to town and she's, she's shopping that day and, and I try to get a hold of her on the phone and, and, and she doesn't answer. And, you know, if I'm not, careful, those imaginations start to go up in my, my mind. Oh, I wonder if something happened. And a little bit later, she calls. Oh, sorry, I was in the checkout line. I'm fine. And okay, no problem. And uh, I don't know if anybody can relate to that. There was a, a headline I saw in a, on a website. It says, wife begins funeral arrangements for husband after he fails to respond to her text within 13 seconds. And, um, of course, this was satire. It wasn't a real headline. But it, 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 it brings out something that's normal for us. We tend to worry. We tend to be fearful. Uh, we, 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 you know, th these are things, we, imaginations will come up, and we, we tend to worry more than we should. Now, today we have technology. We can, we can uh, you know, track them. We can watch the phone and, you know, see where she's at. If she has a phone, too, and... You know, it moves from store to store. Okay, those look like pretty normal stores. Okay, now she's on the freeway heading home. And we can watch this, and then all of a sudden it stops. And you think, wait, that's the freeway. They're not supposed to stop. Something horrible must have happened. And you keep watching pretty soon, zoom, it goes. And then must be everything's fine again. And eventually she drives in the driveway, and oh, wow, it's, it's good to be here. And uh, glad you survived. And she didn't even know she was in danger. And um, <laughs> so... Um, is that right, though? Should the reality of death cause us to just live in fear all the time? The Bible says there is a time to die, and we're all getting closer. So is, is that what we should do? Or here's another option. What about if we just ignore the idea that we're going to die? We pretend it's not going to happen. In fact, we're going to tell each other we're going to live happily ever after. 
You ever believe that? We're just going to live happily ever after. Well, if you believe that, it's, it's, uh, you, you shouldn't believe that because it's not true. We're, we're not going to live happily ever after together in this life. So, you know, ignoring reality isn't, uh, isn't really a, a good option either because then when reality happens, you won't be prepared for it. So, so what's the right response? If ignoring reality isn't right, if living in fear and worry all the time, if that's not right, what's the right response? I have it for you, and I, and I really want this to be a blessing to each one that's here. Let me, say it, let me say it this way. Listen close. I'm convinced that the happiest marriages are not the people who naively believe that they're going to live happily ever after, but rather those who, choose, who acknowledge there is an end coming and therefore give thanks to God every single day that they have together. Give thanks. That's the right response. Ephesians 5.20 says, giving thanks always for all things. Proverbs 5.18 says, rejoice with the wife of your youth. Five weeks ago, we had another wedding in this building. Afterward, we went and had the reception right across the, the hall here, and there was a time of open testimony, and a young man got up toward the end of that open, open mic time, and he told the couple this advice. He said, treasure every day as if it's your last. Treasure every day as if it's your last. Now, he knew what he was talking about. He got married, and his wife passed away nine months later. 270 days. Nine months is approximately 270 days. He knew what it means to treasure each day as if it was last. He knew that that advice was good. Be thankful for every single day. I have a friend in Missouri, got married one week after I did. We were at their wedding. On his 25th wedding anniversary, he passed away from COVID, leaving behind his widow and a number of children. 25 years is a little over 9,000 days. Just a week ago today, I was at another funeral. This couple had been married 37 years. That's a little over 13,000 days. The, the, the wife, the, the lady who died, she died of cancer. She was 57 years old. After the funeral, after the burial, uh, her husband came to me and he just said, how long have you known your wife? I said, well, we met in Bible school. We were 18 years old back in Missouri. He said, well, I knew my wife ever since we were little children. We were in first grade in school together. We knew each other all the way through childhood. We got married. We were together 37 years, and now she's gone. Now, can you imagine going on that way? And yet, those were 13,000 very precious gifts that God gave that couple. So don't be fearful, but be thankful. That's the, that's the, the challenge here. It's the challenge to you. Be thankful. Whether God gives you one or whether he gives you 20,000. You know, if you make it to 50 years, some people celebrate a 50-year wedding anniversary. That's about 20,000 days. Of, and every one of those is a precious gift. So, Sue, if you're at home, Benjamin heads out in the truck, and you wonder if he's going to make it back okay. Or uh, worse yet, maybe he'll get some motorcycle license or an airplane you know, pilot's license, some crazy thing like that. But is he going to make it home okay? But suppose he does. What do you do? Give thanks to God, all right? It's a gift. It's another gift. Benjamin, you're home, and she goes to town, and she somehow survives. You give thanks. Or, um, you know, every day you wake up beside each other, it's a gift. Give God thanks. That thankfulness will add a flavor to your marriage uh, that... Um, it will not only draw you closer to each other, it'll draw you closer to God. And that's really what's important, is, is making him number one. Eventually, this relationship will end. Every relationship out there eventually is going to end, these, these marriage relationships. And the question is, how are you going to live in the meantime? If you live in a thankful way, what are you going to do when that ends? Is it going to be anger toward God, or is it going to be looking up at the face of your father and say, thank you, Lord, for every single one of those gifts, whether it was 270, whether it was 9,000 or 13,000, or even 20,000. I received gift after gift after gift after gift. Every day together is a gift, and God deserves our thanks for each one of those gifts. And when you Finally come, when it finally comes to, the, to an end, just look up into the face of your father and thank him for that string of gifts that he gave you. You know, Benjamin, you're 
about ready to become a very rich man, biblically speaking, a biblically rich man. You say, what do you mean, a biblically rich man? What's that mean? Well, I'd like you to imagine a gathering of the world's richest men. And some of these men are standing around comparing success stories with each other. And the first man says, well, I'm the, I'm the one who started the world's largest software company. Another man walks up and says, that's nothing. I'm the one who started the, 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 the world's largest online retail company. And uh, they look at each other, and a third guy comes up. Hey, he says, that's nothing. I'm the one who invented electric vehicles. And um, fourth guy walks up. He says, hey, that's nothing. I'm the one who made America great again. And uh, so they're, you know, they're, every, every boast that they have, their chins are getting a little bit higher. They're looking down, trying to look down the nose at the rest of them and at everybody around them. And just about that time, here comes a guy walking past, a young man carrying a Bible and Hey, let's stop and let's stop that guy. Maybe we can give him some advice about how to be successful. So they, they flag him down. Hey, come on over here. We, we want to talk to you. Okay, sure. What's up? He, well, well, first of all, what's your name? Well, my name's Benjamin. Well, Benjamin, what do you do for a living? Well, I drive a truck up and down the highway. Just one truck? Benjamin, you need to hang around guys like us. Eventually, you'll have a whole fleet of trucks. Okay, um... Tell us, Benjamin, where, where do you live? Well, I, I rent a little apartment from my dad. And they sort of roll their eyes and look at each other. And, and well, Benjamin, tell us this. Okay, what's the most valuable thing you have? Of all the things you have, what, what's the, most, the, the one with the most value to it? Benjamin holds up his Bible. He says, oh, that's easy. It's my relationship with Jesus Christ and my membership in his kingdom. And once again, they look at each other, okay, Benjamin, we realize you're one of those religious guys. Okay, forget that. We're talking about something here on earth. What's the most valuable thing you have here on earth? He says, oh, he says, that would be my VW. Really? A VW is the thing, the most valuable thing you have on earth? Yeah, VW, it stands for virtuous woman. And the Bible says her price is far above rubies. And... Now those people look at each other, those rich men and their chins that were going up are going down. Pretty soon they're all looking at the floor and they're thinking to themselves, that young man is richer than all of us. You know, we have, we have all this money, but if we could trade our money for just one happy marriage, we would be far better off than we are. You know, this man, he's got, he's got his, he was kind of a jerk and his wife left him and took half of his money. This man, he's, he wasn't faithful to his wife and she also did the same thing. The next guy, he's on his, like his third wife, and he can't, you know, he can't be faithful to her even. And, and the fourth guy, he's got like, uh, you know, ten different children from how many different women. And, and they realize that even though they may not admit it with their mouths, true wealth is something that they don't yet have. And they, uh, they probably secretly long for it. I think there's a lot of people that do. This wealth, Benjamin, is fragile, but it's also very valuable. It's, uh, it's easy to destroy these riches that you have, but guard it. Give thanks for it. And uh, keep God number one, put your wife second, and yourself last. And Sue, put God number one, your husband second, and yourself last. And you will be very, very wealthy. You will be very, very rich. And no matter what God brings your way, give thanks to God for every single gift that he gives you. It will draw you closer together, each other, as a couple. But more importantly, it's going to draw you closer to God who gave you this gift. I wonder if we could all stand for prayer. Father, we thank you so much for gathering us here. I thank you for Benjamin and Sue and their testimony, their desire to please you and build your kingdom. I thank you for this gathering. I thank you for every guest that's here. Lord, coming from near or far, Lord, you know each person that's in this building. You know their heart. You know their condition before you. You know, Lord, everything about them. And I pray, God, that you would just invite each one that's here into that your kingdom in a more 
deep way than whatever anyone has experienced. Lord, we look forward to that time when the books will be open, the book of life will be open, and names will be there, but some names will not be there. We ask you, Lord, to call men, draw men to yourself, draw men to repentance, men and women, boys and girls. I pray, God, that you would build your kingdom today as a result of this gathering. I pray that you'd send each person home with a blessing. I pray that you would guard and protect us as we go from here. I pray that you'd guard and protect Benjamin and Sue in this marriage they're about to enter into. I pray that it would be a powerful testimony of what you can do with a young man and young woman who are totally sold out for you. I pray a blessing on each one in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. If you'd get your hymn book, this one is not in the handout. Let's turn to page 385. All the way my Savior leads me, 385. sitting here this morning considering the situation. First of all, I want to thank you, Brother Roger, for the words, the, the testimony and the, even the admonition uh, that you gave. 
goes to that. <clears throat> but I was sitting here thinking and just considering what is going on here today. This is not a little thing that's happening. This is something that is God is here. He is seeing everything that's going on. And the blessing of it all is God is saying, listen to it. If somehow, and I don't know how to do it, if I could get a If I could somehow, and I suppose many people have tried to do this, and we've even tried in our own minds, that <clears throat> get, a, get somehow an idea of who God is. We could read the scriptures, and he created the heavens and the earth, and that's a marvelous thing. We can read the scriptures, and we can see that he loves every one of us to a, to a depth that he sent his own son to die for us. He did nothing wrong. We're the, thing, we're the ones that did something wrong. And he died for us. And somehow get a picture of that God putting his hand of blessing here. We're sitting in a very holy place. All of us. <clears throat> I'd like to somehow impress that on us. I have some words for you. <clears throat> and they're not my words. They're the words of God. <clears throat> Brother Roger talked about what would you pull out of these scriptures to say to a married to a, a couple getting married and and what's the best thing to say and what is most important and all that and and I don't know there's lots of important things to say but this is what came to my mind as I considered my position here this morning <clears throat> also as I have looked back over my 17,000 days of marriage I've learned a few things that this works <clears throat> three things be ye kind to each other Tender-hearted. That means caring about the other one and their feelings, how they feel. And forgiving. Kind, tender-hearted, and forgiving. That's nice words to say, and those things, those words, and those, those attitudes will make your marriage a tremendous blessing to you. But there is another motivation. There's the motivation that motivates you to do that is also doing this because God, for Christ's sake, hath done this for you. We're doing this for God. That is my words to you, tender-hearted, kind, tender-hearted, and forgiving. Okay, bridal party may come forward. You may join your hands. Benjamin, do you, in the presence of God and these witnesses, take Susanna to be your wife? Will you love and cherish her, provide and care for her in health and in sickness, in prosperity and in adversity? Share with her the joys and sorrows of life, Exercise patience, kindness, forbearance toward her. Live with her in peace 
has become a faithful Christian husband, forsaking all others, keeping yourself only unto her as long as you both shall live. I do. Susanna, do you, in the presence of God and these witnesses, take Benjamin to be your wedded husband? We love and cherish him, provide for him in health and in sickness, in prosperity and in adversity. Share with him the joys and sorrows of life. Exercise patience, kindness, and forbearance toward him. Live with him in peace as becometh a faithful Christian wife, forsaking all others, keeping yourself only unto him as long as you both shall live. I do. God is heard. As your hands have been joined together, may it also be a symbol of unity of heart, always working together for the cause of the Lord in your marriage. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. The uh, parents of the bride and groom may come forward. And while they are doing that, they will have a, they will have a quiet prayer among themselves and will be listening to, to a song. And you may also say your prayers for them also. It's my privilege to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Benjamin Gussie. <laughs>
Okay, for some announcements, <clears throat> in a second here, we're going to sing two songs. Um, but after those two songs, uh, everyone's invited to just visit right where you are, just sit and visit, no problem, while they're preparing over there. Um, at some point, the ushers will come back and dismiss each one. Please exit to the ushers right. Um, once you go through, you will be there to see the new Mr. and Mrs. Hall. Um, Gussie, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I, I wondered if I messed that up. <laughs> the new Mr. and Mrs. Gussie. Um, they're asking that you would keep your visit brief because there's a lot of people that need to get through. So if you'd make your visit quick. Um, and I think that is all of the announcements. So let's turn to 607, Blessed Be the Tide That Binds, in our hymn books. And then the second song will be Faithful Love, which is in the sheet there. Blessed Be the Tide That Binds, 607. Mm -hmm. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. The Grab your sheets. Faithful love. Hopefully, we didn't just dismiss everybody who knows this song. I've heard our youth sing it, but I, this will be my first time to lead it. So if you know it, please sing out nice and loud to help me out. <clears throat> Oh. 
just wait for the ushers and you're free to visit. Thank you.
Miss the first tables and just follow their lead. You're going to be going along the back walls across the serving tables and then come back down to the center to set. And of course, they need to be served first, I believe. So, very good. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the message that you've given us. We thank you, Lord, for the, the example of what a wedding is, a way of describing so much more the, in person that we can see two people loving each other and devoting their lives to each other and saying we're going to forsake all others for each other. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for that example. And we pray, Father, over the, this new couple that you would continue to, to teach that lesson through their lives and let their lives be a lesson to others. Father, thank you for this food. Thank you for the hands that prepared it. Thank you for the time that it took. Thank you, Lord, for all the devotion of friends and family. We pray, Father, that you would feel welcomed in our conversations at these tables, and that, Lord, you would just continue to bless this day. In Jesus' name, amen.
Hey, let's go see Gramps. So I was just told <clears throat> there is plenty left for seconds. So if you guys are feeling the need, you are more than welcome to go back there. In fact, have you ever had anything in your life where you know you probably shouldn't say something and you know if you had asked somebody, uh, they would give you negative feedback and so you just don't ask people. That way you can, you can with a clear conscience say something. Well, I'm going to do that right now. There is a box over there that says a honeymoon fund. 
As you go get your seconds, just, just go pie the box and see if there's anything that's calling to you to, uh, to bless a couple. I, I'm just saying. I, I did, anyway, uh, but the seconds are there. In a little bit, we're going to be serving uh, dessert. And then at that point, there's going to be some people coming up here and giving some little speeches. Family members have uh, asked ahead of time, so I have a list to go through. But right now, while you're looking at your seconds and thinking about the rest of the day, if you have any comments you want to share, then start thinking about how you can um, condense them. <laughs> because we, by 2.15, I got a schedule here, 2.14 actually, I need to turn the mic over to the couple. So uh, we're going to have, but I think eight people who have asked it to say something as soon as they're done. Uh, there's going to be a line over here of anybody else that wants to say something. And at 2.14, no matter where we are in that line, we're going to close it down. So be just thinking about right now how to make your thoughts concise. Thanks. And seconds.
sucker. Hey, freeze. Hey, ah! Okay, my cue to start the next day, leg here of our journey is to uh, watch the dessert being served and that's happening. So, that's my cue. At this point, uh, there's a list here of family members that have decided to, to say something. Mama, if you wanna come up. Well, uh, yes. Oh, they're passing out. No, tell them. Don passed them out. Did they say well, they're starting now. So, um, are you listen. ready to say anything? I mean, yeah. Because <laughs> Neil's is wondering. I mean, I have no. Just I don't know if we'll get everybody's attention because they're all being asked if they want to say something. <clears throat> Did you want to ask Sammy? I'm going to start singing. Do you want to ask him? <laughs> No, you don't. 
I say as far as advice, I would say make sure that you always take time to look in each other's eyes when you talk. Just always make sure there's a connection. Don't do that whole walking out the door while you're having an important conversation that that's, uh, can be misunderstood, misconstrued. I'm getting closer. So just, uh, but you heard me. That's the important thing. All right, you guys heard me. So as far as biblical advice, <laughs> my wife and I, 28 years ago, uh, had this, this spoken over our marriage from Deuteronomy chapter 30. And, I, and, and the analogy is the uh, Israelites were out wandering around in the wilderness and then they moved into the promised land. And we saw marriage as the promised land. We, we are going to where God has provided a land for us to dwell. But he says this in Deuteronomy 30. And I just encourage you to consider this as a challenge to yourself as well. See, I have set before you today life and uh, life and... Hmm. I don't know why it's misspelled there. Uh, life and good, death and evil. And that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments, his statutes and his judgments, that you may live and multiply and that the Lord your God will bless you in the land or the marriage where you go to possess. But if your heart turns away so that you do not hear and are not drawn away the, uh, and worship other gods and serve them, I announce to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land which you cross over in the Jordan to go in to possess. I call heaven and earth as a witness today against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both you and your descendants may live, that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him, for he is your life and the length of your days." and that you may dwell in the land, or the marriage, where the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. So, it's all decision, every single day. Am I going to obey God in this marriage? Am I going to obey God in love? Am I going to obey God and forgive? Am I going to just always obey God, and he will continue his promise in this blessed land. But it's when you choose not to, then when it that's when that life becomes a curse. That when it gets a drudgery, it gets a duty. But love the Lord. Listen to his promises. And obey him. And it just becomes such a joy. Okay. I just want to say, I guess, everyone, Benjamin, you were the perfect one to be our firstborn. You were always, from the time you were little, you were protective, protective of mama, but... Of the younger ones, you've been, once you learned to talk, you were always very um, verbal with your compliments and sweet things you would say. And Susanna already knows that you're like that. We've all gotten to see it now. Go to Susanna. It's really, really precious to watch. Um, I think, Susanna, you're in for a big treat. Um, just a really helpful, always helpful, even, I don't know, um, it will be missed around the home. Benjamin took it upon himself to take, just decide to do all the garbages in the house, and uh, and it's already we're already starting to miss it as he's been so busy this last week. So, we're, big little brothers, you're going to have to step up. Um, and uh, yeah, I just been I'm just really blessed with the man you've become, being so scheduled and all the things. One of the other things I'm going to miss is you saying goodbye to me in the mornings in the middle of the night. Um, but now I'm very blessed that Susanna is going to get to take over that. So may God bless you both. I'm very happy, very happy. Oh, one more thing I was going to say is, um, you know, Benjamin kept it very quiet. He had his eyes on Susanna for, we figured out it was over, it was years, but was very quiet. No one knew. And... When he finally, you know, he told us he would tell us that, like, in January, he was going to tell us the end of July or in July, he said. <clears throat> and when he finally sat us down to tell us who it was that he had been praying about, um, Daddy and I looked at each other and smiled because we had noticed her already. And just between us, you know how you might do that? I don't know. thought she would be a really, we, we just felt really blessed. God's done a good thing. So, uh, Neil, Diana?
Well, uh, thank you all for coming and showing your support for Benjamin and Susanna. Um, some of you may not know, I mean, we were just up here a little sh shy of five weeks ago uh, with Miriam and Timothy, and, and that was truly a blessing. And it's a, again, it's a blessing to see so many here supporting a marriage in a day and age that uh, marriage is so torn down. So thank you for <clears throat> some have traveled great distances, made great efforts, so thank you. And I just thank you for all the servers and everybody that's helped put this t together. I mean, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of planning, and, and I'm just uh, thankful for Susanna's diligence and working hard and, and making it special. And I thank you for being a part of that and making it special. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> the cookies are actually made by Susanna. So she <clears throat> so she and that's a lot of a lot of work to make I think close to 500 cookies so it's a lot of work so so yeah she she's a blessing to us our home will be missing her greatly she was a tremendous cook uh, you'll probably see that maybe on Benjamin in a few years you'll see <laughs> Benjamin's gonna have to work hard to to keep trim like he is so so maybe you need to pray for him on that too. So, <laughs> some of our family history, I guess. Uh, when Susanna was 11 months old, um, we had a preemie baby, and Simeon's here, and it really was a challenge for our home. For Mama being gone for I think 72 days, we were in the hospital. <clears throat> What's that? Was it 63 days? Yeah. We've had four preemies, so I'm. I'm, I get their dates mixed up. So, yeah, it was 63 days. Uh, and she stayed at the hospital or around the McDonald house. And so I would come home. I was farming and working. It was in the spring. And so me and Susanna had quite a connection because, I mean, I was there uh, day in, day out, oftentimes. And so she's my little girl. <laughs> Miriam's my little girl, too. And Naomi's my little girl. I have three girls. So they're all special. But... Uh, I think Susanna had a special connection with me, and uh, we still, hopefully we can continue that. So she's very dear to me. She's a precious daughter. She's a godly young lady. I'm thankful for her, thankful for what the Lord's done in our lives, in our home. Uh, and as all these courtships, I mean, me and my wife have been praying for godly spouses for years, not we just prayed for the spouses because we didn't know who they were. We didn't anticipate who they were. We didn't try to pair up or anything we just we wanted godly young people for our young people and uh, and the Lord did a tremendous work in our home in the past six seven years um, <clears throat> we weren't begging for courtships to start and then <clears throat> a year and a half ago we just got almost like we got broadsided I mean, it was like <laughs> I mean they were getting that age I mean you just know that it's eventually coming but uh with uh, Miriam and Timothy, you know, I got a call from Jeremy in September, and then Bob called me in the first part of November, and I hadn't even approached Miriam about Timothy, you know, a lot of conversation going on between, uh, I, get, I guess I get to thinking that as a father of a bride, you, you start becoming part of the CIA, and you're an FBI agent, you know, you're you're investigating these young men. You're wanting to find out what these young men are about. And so I was doing some of that, and then when Bob called and says, my son is interested in your daughter. And I, hadn't, I thought, oh, I got Miriam going on here and, and working with Timothy and Jeremy. And, I, and then he wouldn't tell me who the daughter was. And he finally <laughs> says, well, which son? I mean, you got two you got sons. I got Caleb over there. You got two sons. Finally, he says, well, it's Benjamin. Okay, that's... <laughs> That's one I knew then, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't tell me which daughter, and I, I went to my wife, and I think the next day or a day or two later, Bob called me, well, it's Susanna, and I, whew, and I didn't know what, <laughs> I know I went home that night or talked to my wife, and Bob just called me and said that Benjamin's in and arrested one of my daughters, and I didn't know how to walk through that, and I, so when he said Susanna, then, okay, well, I makes life a little easier and so <laughs> but that was kind of a funny story and then and I just I mean she was she's a young lady still and I didn't know whether she was quite ready for that step and so 
I took some time with her. I just wanted to make sure if some young man did approach us that you know, she'd be ready for that. And so I just questioned her, are you ready for marriage? I mean, I guess as a father, you may always see her little girls as little girls, but I know she's not. She's a young lady. And so she, <clears throat> she felt at peace with it, that she'd be ready for that step. And then I mentioned who it was. And so it took her a week or two to walk through that. And uh, so she, <clears throat> we're very thankful for Benjamin. He's a very nice young man, very compassionate, caring young man. So we are very thankful for that. Um, seems like there's something else I was wanting to share. But no, we're, we're very blessed um, by their testimony, by their heart for each other. And, and keep praying for them. You know, this isn't a once and done thing. It's uh, to walk things out. There's things they'll face in a marriage and relationship. As with any marriage or relationship, there's trials. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> there's always something that I, if I felt I should have shared. Um, you have anything you'd like to say? So, yeah, keep praying for him. And again, thank you for all your support. <clears throat> well, as I was thinking about <clears throat> what to share last night, I really couldn't organize my thoughts very well. Um, I don't know, I'm not, a lot of times I just wing what I, what I think or feel at the moment, so we'll see how this goes. But as I was thinking <clears throat> about what um, to share about Susanna, and I've told Benjamin this before, um, I really can't, and even when Roger mentioned um, Ephesians 4.32 in his sermon, I had to think, of all the people I know, Susanna is one that probably lives up to that verse um, extremely well. Like, <clears throat> and I told Benjamin, I, to, I told him, I can't remember a, of ever a time that Susanna said something unkind or sharp or angry, and that's something that um, probably many of us can't say about ourselves or maybe even each other, um, and that's something that I can say about Susanna, and I'm sure, I mean, she's got hall blood in her, so she has some spice and can say some things not so nice, <laughs> but um, I could not think of anything, and maybe I'm just being a little biased, um, but she's a very very sweet, gracious young lady, and um, when I heard Benjamin was interested in her um, and everything was kind of undercover yet, I was happy because she needs someone that is very gracious and kind because she's also very sensitive, and um, and so that's, that's a big thing I'm thankful for with Benjamin is he's very gracious and kind as well, and it's kind of shown in the relationship that they're a very others-minded and gracious <clears throat> couple. Um, on a li little bit of a lighter note, um, this summer, um, and Susanna knows what story this is, um, she's worked for me the past two summers, and um, this one job we were doing, she was mowing the front part of the yard and I was mowing the back. and. It, we, we did this job a little bit different. I didn't need to do part of what I normally do. And so she was mowing the front yard and I was mowing the back. And the front yard was smaller. And I was using a mower that was a little more applicable for um, just the backyard. And so I was just finishing, finishing the backyard and I expected her to, fi well, she came back to start mowing the back because she normally mowed part of the back. And I just told her, just waved her on to go park the mower. and. And I was expecting her to just, you know, start blowing off the sidewalks or whatever, um, grass clippings off and everything. And so I keep mowing the back, doing my job, and waiting for her to come around the corner of the house and, you know, do what she needed to do in the back. And <laughs> while I kept waiting and waiting, I knew she, was, she should have parked the mower by then, and kept waiting and waiting and waiting. And 
you know, just kept my eye where she should have walked around the corner of the house, and she never did. And then finally I just, I got done, went parked the mower, and went ahead and did the job. And, and she's like, oh, you know, I didn't give her grief. I, I probably teased her a good bit, but <laughs> um, she said, well, I had to message Benjamin, and, and then I forgot about it. <laughs> so I don't know. She probably had something to, to plan, or I don't know when it, it was probably later summer. And so then, you know, it was just kind of a fun moment, and I didn't give her grief or anything. It just was kind of fun to tease her. And so, yeah, she's definitely been, we've had a really good relationship, and it's been real good and fun working with her, and I'll definitely definitely miss her a lot and she's I mean I could keep going on and on but I'll say one last thing about her and then I'll say a little bit about Benjamin but another thing about Susanna is she's she can serve and do things that you almost wouldn't notice but you know they got done and she just kind of meekly sneaks around and gets them done and often goes unpraised and that's probably some of us that have lived around her, it's some of our, probably our fault that she hasn't been noticed for that, and I really want to um, acknowledge her for that now. I mean, there's many times I'd get out of bed late, and she's up and making breakfast for us so we can get out working, and she has lunch half-packed and everything, so <clears throat> yeah, she's been a big blessing. With Benjamin, um, I don't know how many years I've known him. How old were we? We were like the same age, so what, we were 17 when we met, 16? So it's been about seven, seven, eight years probably. But there was this one subject that, as probably silly young fellows, um, communicated about um, young ladies. Um, <laughs> and he always kind of had this, you know, we, we, had some, we had some mature thoughts, but as we've grown older, obviously, it's matured a lot. And and then when he when I found out it was one of my sisters, he was like, I was like, okay, well, this is this is interesting. I never would have really thought, but um, anyways, um, I've appreciated him a lot and his example um, of, like I said earlier, graciousness and um, yeah, just being very accepting of of all people and just not exclusive to, and he's very, he's a very good listener, um, and very understanding, and you just, he's not a, a pressure person, you feel pressured around, so anyway, I'm happy for you both, um, excited to see what the Lord does with you guys, um, appreciate and love you both. After Titus will be uh, Caleb, and then uh, Amos. Go ahead. Well, um, <clears throat> we'll miss you, Susanna. Um, hopefully not too much, though, because hopefully we can come out and visit, if that's okay. Okay. We'll try to do that. Um, probably the biggest thing I'll miss is um, many a times working late, coming in from the fields late. Um, there was many times late at night, well after everyone was in bed, and she was generally sometimes up and made sure I found the supper in the fridge and um, made sure I had enough and maybe even encouraged me to eat too much, so be careful, Benjamin. But um, just don't snitch the cookie dough because there's some serious consequences. Um, but anyways, so she's definitely a wonderful, is a wonderful sister, and she's going to treat you well, and she's definitely a virtuous woman, so take care of her, and like Moses said, she is very sensitive and tender, and yeah, so be kind and gentle to her, and yeah, God bless you both, I'm super happy for you, and you guys look happy, so I think everyone's happy for you, so. And I don't have a whole lot to say about Benjamin, except for there was many, many, we had many fun times 
probably the most was at Bible school. We stayed generally at the same place, and I'm not sure I'll go into too many details on some of those, but it's, it, was, it was very good. Um, so I've enjoyed knowing Benjamin for a while and their family too, so happy for you both. Keep the Lord number one in your lives, and things will go well. Thank you. Well, the day has finally come, the day that Benjamin's anticipated for many years. Um, several memories of, of him, even years before he had anyone in mind. This was a topic that he really enjoyed to discuss and talk about. And uh, those of you who knew him at least somewhat well know, know what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, it was, he's always been very happy for him, very happy for both of you. But one memory I have in, in regards to that was... Every time, not every time, but sometimes when, you know, maybe he was thinking of buying something that maybe he didn't need, but maybe he wanted, maybe it wasn't a necessity or something, or maybe someone would give him a little bit of cash or something, he would say, oh, I'll put this in my honeymoon account. Um, and that was, that was a comment he made a lot. And I, to this day, I'm, I'm guessing that was more of a joke. Uh, but he said it so seriously that I kind of was like, I was just a long, little young guy. I was like, is that, is that actually a thing? Like, do I need to call my bank and create a honeymoon account? <laughs> so, like I said, I don't know if he probably was just joking. But anyways, yeah. So, this day, I guess, for me is kind of bittersweet. Um, you know, it feels like, it feels like I'm losing a brother. Uh, we've always had our differences. Ever since we were little, I used to, you know, enjoy a certain type of thing. And he would enjoy something that's completely different. But at the same time, you know... He was always my brother. He was there when I needed advice. He was there when I needed help. I've got a lot of fun memories with him. I remember when we were little, there was a couple times we had these spotlights. There's a couple times we'd sneak out in the middle of the night, pitch black, and we'd go running through the fields. You probably remember this. And uh, then we, with these spotlights, we'd stop and we'd scan for rabbits or any other animals. Sometimes we would, you know, spotlight a car, which is illegal, so kids don't do that. But, uh, um, I remember it was so dark that to not get lost, I had to hold his shirt tail in my hands. So I have these fun memories of just running through the woods with his shirt tail right there. Um, and I was terrified of the dark. I would walk outside the door at night. I was freaked out. But when I was with him, I knew I was safe. So, but then there are some memories I have of him that aren't so nice. Uh, we used to wrestle a lot. And uh, no matter how hard I tried or what technique I would use, he would always win. He was always a stronger one. And it bugged me, you know, because in theory, if someone can always win you in a wrestling match, and they can kind of do whatever they want to you, right? And you can't stop them. And so uh, the one technique I, I used, and I used it a lot because it was like the only defense I had against him, is I'd lay on my back, and I'd use my feet up like this. And so each time he'd come in at me, I'd just start kicking at him. Um, and then I'd, you know, spin around as he walks around me. But... <laughs> And it, it got to a point I was so frustrated, I went to our computer and I googled how to win a wrestling match. Um, and I, I probably learned a couple things and it probably didn't do any good. Um, but yeah, and so like I said, it, it feels like I'm losing a brother. But in reality, you know, he's just going to be a couple miles down the road. And, and I won't see him as much. The, my experience with him won't be the same as it used to be. But that's okay. And I'm excited to see what God's going to do to through you um, as he uses you guys. And... Uh, Another way to look at it is I'm not losing a brother, I'm gaining a sister. And I don't know if anyone said this to you yet, but I officially welcome Susanna to the, the Gussie family. Uh, but yeah, I guess I don't really have any more embarrassing stories. or Yeah, so with that, I guess congratulations and I love you both. Good, Amos. And by the way, he may officially have welcomed you to the family, but I'm welcoming you to people calling you Goose, Goosey, Goosey. Um, have fun with that. We all have. <laughs> Amos? Well, you guys look great together. Well, I'll start with Susanna, I guess. Well, when we were younger, we didn't get along the best, I guess. And, <laughs> and I noticed around, around the time my dad said he, um, Benjamin asked her, or asked him about her, I noticed our relationships our relationship started getting better. And we stopped fighting and just nicer to each other and got funner. Anyways, yeah, and then just the way she dated was just kind of funny, just her random little quirks. 
and <laughs> ran like when Benjamin would come, he'd be like, she'd be like, I'm gonna go straighten this up, or like she'd just run through the house straightening, straightening random things up, putting random decorations up, and then, and she was just that type of girl, just trying to keep stuff neat, and I like that about her because it just kept our house neater. <laughs> I'll try to keep it that way. <laughs> Well, Benjamin, probably one of the best things we had was the trip out here from for harvest this summer and or last summer. And just the whole drive out here, our conversations and everything are just fun, the goofy stuff and <laughs> and one thing I really liked about him is just the way he related with younger children. It's just he never, if they spilt something on him, like it was hot or something, he wouldn't just get mad. He'd, he'd say, okay, let's go help clean, like let's go clean that up. And it's just something i really seen in him that I really admire, and I want to be more like that. And so God bless you both. Bethany? After Bethany, Andrew? Bethany? Well, uh, Susanna, welcome to the family, and it's been fun watching you guys from the beginning. <laughs> but um, I had a story from way back when, thankfully he hasn't done anything like this recently, but back when Benjamin would make uh, meals, uh, sometimes he would like to add this secret ingredient. And uh, it got so far to the point where I think he put cake and eggs several times, and then he would ask, what was the secret ingredient? And it was kind of hard to figure it out. And uh, another something, you also put candy canes in the eggs once. And I can't remember anything else, but anyway, yeah, just some random weird stuff that was in the fridge that he didn't want to go to waste. And so, um, oh, you put chocolate bar in too once. Some kind of candy bar in. But um, anyway, yeah, so I uh, hope we've taught you how to make scrambled eggs the correct way with no in ingredients or... Um, and yeah, welcome to the family, Susanna. <clears throat> so first off, Benjamin kind of put me up to this. I'm very nervous in front of crowds, so <laughs> um, I'm trying to do this for you on your special day, and the rest of y'all get to listen. Anyhow, he asked me if I would talk at open mic, and my mind is like mentally scrolling all the terrors of public speaking and wondering how the preachers do it. <laughs> Uh, the first thing that came to my mind was our day spent in the hazelnuts like four, five, six years ago. And the man, the memories we made. The deal was uh, Benjamin's boss at the time needed help planting hazelnut trees, among other things like trimming suckers and dealing with all of them. So Benjamin just happened to be connected with a bunch of young people that were still wet behind the ears, but they could work. So we worked about a month roughly at the most, and other than that it was a couple days or a week in the spring here and there. It was cold, muddy work, and frozen, and did I mention muddy? We kept our spirits up and entertained ourselves by talking constantly. Our most discussed subject was the subject, uh, mostly because it was Benjamin's favorite subject, and I enjoyed it too. Benjamin never got tired of the subject and was always coming up with the randomest ideas, questions, thought processes. Um, the, it was, the subject was codenamed for all things related to weddings, romance, dating, marriage, and one's future spouse. And Benjamin's honeymoon account. It's been around for a while. <laughs> so it was a lot of fun to discuss. Before we knew Susie was the one, we knew all about her or what she was going to be like. Benjamin would tell us all about his girl. She would be absolutely beautiful. That was an entire description to itself. She would be a wonderful cook and an awesome singer. She would be kind and compassionate, just perfect, and she would enjoy spending time with him. There were a lot of things we heard about her. <laughs> we were completely amazed by her amazingness. But we also kind of pitied Benjamin because we didn't think such a girl actually existed. Um, <laughs> the really funny thing was after Benjamin started dating Susanna, we realized she fit his descriptions exactly. Um, another memory that comes to mind was Benjamin's F-150 and his legendary subwoofer. It was a pretty big thing to us, and we enjoyed cranking it all the way up. 
It was either all or nothing, mostly all. We played it as loud as the tenderest ears among us could stand it. If I remember correctly, one could get a decent massage sitting on that seat. <laughs> So one day that was especially traumatic for us, I'll never forget. So we get to Gussie's and hang out for a little bit before going to the field. So I get there and I'm gonna dump my belongings in his pickup and then I get stopped by Timothy. He's snickering and acting like he's done something suspicious or is gonna do something suspicious. Nothing new, but intriguing as to what's going on now. Anyhow, he tells me the cat got in Benjamin's pickup and relieved itself on the seat. More colorful language was used, but you get the picture. So drama, this didn't sound very promising. Now we had to tell Benjamin. <laughs> the whole thing struck me as funny, and I was laughing, and I knew I couldn't keep a straight face, which left Timothy to be the bearer of bad news. Benjamin actually met us at the door as we were coming up, and if I remember correctly, he puts his hands over his mouth. He says, oh no. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah, we were sure. Somehow the cat had got in during the night and enjoyed a five-star hotel experience. After assessing damages, our solution was to put a garbage bag over the mess, which left me and Timothy to precariously balance on the one and one-fourth of a seat left for 30 minutes. And that morning, I don't know what somebody dumped into his coffee, but Benjamin did his craziest driving that morning. The one turn we're going way too fast to turn, and I'm like, Benjamin, are we going to slow down? Uh, yeah, we definitely were going to slow down, but instead of slowing gently to a stop and stopping and turning around like normal people do, we slammed to a stop just past our turning. Benjamin cranks our heart, and we made it. Shockingly, but as backseat people, it was not pretty. <laughs> we were dumped on top of each other and trying to hang on for all we were worth to spare our dignity. We untangled ourselves only to go around two more hairpin curves, curves at breakneck speeds, dumping us from one side of the pickup to the other. We survived, sort of. Um, on another note, one thing I really appreciated about Benjamin is how he led out in our youth group. Between the dual leadership of Benjamin and Dennis, they got things started, banded us together. Uh, they did a great job leading our youth group in the early days. Uh, one memory in particular that sticks out is when we went Bible school shopping one evening. We were all in the parking lot in a circle waiting for Sam to return something he accidentally bought. <laughs> Naturally, we discussed where to go eat next. Benjamin wanted to go to buffet style restaurant. Dennis had something against buffet style restaurants. Uh, Benjamin, I think your reasoning was that it was cheaper and more money in the honeymoon account, something like that. <laughs> anyway, so I kid you not, we like the very mature people we were argued in that Walmart parking lot for 20 minutes. Finally, unable to come to a sensible conclusion, we did what all mature adults do in an argument. We called up my Uncle Carl, who at the time was very experienced in matters of dating, girls, and restaurants. He suggested, more like told us, to go to Panda Express. That settled it, and it's been a youth group favorite ever since. And come to think of it, it was the perfect mix between Benjamin and Dennis's sides. Looking back on our youth group memories, yeah, we were super immature and definitely didn't know what life was all about. And we argued and fought and discussed and probably said things got too far. But through it all, I've been thankful for you, group, how much we talked and were open and honest. Uh, we got to know each other and communicated, and it really drew, drew our youth group together. So, Benjamin and Susanna, I wish you guys the best as you start your new life together. Hope that honeymoon account comes in handy. And if all else fails, just go to Panda Express. <laughs> I got to be at my great-grandparents' 70th wedding anniversary. They were married for 75 years. My grandparents were married for 57 years. Each one of them shared with me advice, and one man who's still in this room today shared with me, he has 12 children. I asked each one, what advice would you have for a man who's married, getting married, gonna have a family? And the one thing that stuck with me the most in my short seven years, being a husband and a father of only one, let alone 12, big families on both sides, he said, I'm sorry and thank you go a long ways. It was summer of last year. My daughter's birthday party was when I got to meet Susanna for the first time. 
And an, another individual up here said that she's got some hall blood in her, some maybe some spice and not something nice. But what I saw was some spice as we were playing beanbags in the holes. And it was her first time playing cornhole. And not only was she winning, but I was like, wow, Benjamin, you guys are doing great. And she goes, that's because he has me on his team. I want you to remember that. It is written, a man who finds a wife finds a good thing. And that's favor in the Lord. You might not always feel that way. There will be days, but it is still a good thing. Adam, on this earth, with God, without sin, and God said it is not good for man to be alone. If he said that while well, everything was still perfect, how much more in today's imperfect. So, marriage is a beautiful thing. It's a complicated thing, and it is a very real oneness. So, I'm sorry and thank you. Go a long ways. And I'll end with the smartest, wealthiest, most successful people I've ever met. 75 years of marriage, great grandparents. 57 years with grandparents. The smartest people I've ever known had the least to give advice to me in the least amount of words. That's what they gave me. I offer it to you. Very good. One of my, uh, to my shame, favorite memories of, of Benjamin, uh, Susanna, you, you might come across this, although you're a very integritous person. You have a lot of integrity, so I don't, I don't think you'll have this problem. But I, uh, I used to drive for, for Trevor Durstein. I was sitting over there and uh, going into to the port over in uh, Portland, and you used to be able just to drive in there as a, as a Joe driver, but it came a time you had to have federal credentials, and if you didn't have this, you could go to jail, and if you snuck somebody into the port, you could go to jail. I mean, this is, this is super important stuff, but I had already had the practice of bringing my children with me one at a time, and there's no way I could get them a federal credential. So when we went to the guard shack, easy enough, have the children lay in the sleeper in the back, and we'll get in and do our business and, and get out. And um, one day Benjamin said, uh, Dad, what's the difference between this and lying? <laughs> so that kind of that kind of ended that. So we yeah. A lot of integrity there. Anybody else? So we don't have to officially, according to my instructions, we don't have to officially close down until two fifth four two fourteen. So we have lots of time to talk. Am I missing the cue there? We have lots of time to talk. Uh, if Yes. Come on up. Well, I don't have, I'm not, don't have a bunch of stories to tell, although um, I probably do should, but um, I was laying in bed last night <coughs> and thought about this, and I was thinking that I need to give what I hope is some advice. And so I got up last night and I just wrote this out. But always keep Jesus at the center of your life, both of you, Benjamin and Susanna. Be mindful of him at all times. Approach all your situations and circumstances as a team. Benjamin, Susanna, and Jesus. Or I should say, Jesus, Benjamin, and Susanna. With him on your team, there's all things are possible. Lean on him for strength in time of trouble. Share with him your joys in times of triumph. Ask him for wisdom and guidance in all your decisions, large and small. Acknowledge and thank him for all the miracles he performs in your life, and there will be many. Most people think that many of the good things that happen in our lives are just coincidences, especially when they seem smaller and significant, but when actually there are times that God is intervening. You need to be aware, continually be aware of those times. Talk with him often, both as a couple and individually. He wants that relationship with you. I guess we can sum, up, sum it up with the verses in Proverbs you're no doubt very familiar with. And that's trust in the Lord with all your heart. 
and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Benjamin Susanna, Nana and I are here to help you whenever you need it, if you need help. Well, um, I, I've known Benjamin for a long time. I don't really know um, how long ago we met, but um, one thing I appreciate about Benjamin is his kindness and friendliness. I think everybody know, here knows that he knows no stranger. And um, one thing I noticed that at, especially we went to Bible school back in Pennsylvania um, in Ephrata, and Benjamin was just, you couldn't get more than five minutes, minutes of his time because he was on to the next person trying to make new friends. And that's just really um, something I, that's a, a blessing, and um, I appreciate that about you. And I'm excited about your guys' marriage, and one, one thing I would encourage you in is to, um, uh, like, um, just to be completely open with each other, to uh, have transparency, and um, I definitely second what a lot of people have said here about keeping Christ number one. And I feel convicted about that because I'm still, sometimes I, I don't always keep, keep the Lord the center and I, and I want to keep him number one. And um, it may be a temptation sometimes to maybe put your wife or your children or work um, in front of the Lord, um, but we must keep Christ the center. So I'll be praying for you in that and pray for me in that. And um, yeah, so anyways, I'm just, uh, and also I appreciated. Um, Benjamin, when he was courting, he, he called me a few times and asked me some questions, and I just really appreciated his heart um, about caring about Susanna, and like, he's like, he's, I mean, one time he called me, he's like, how do, how do you know, like, when she's ready, you know, and I was like, I didn't even really know what to tell him, except just, like, seek the Lord and get some good counsel, but, you know, I just appreciated his tender heart for that, so I'm excited for you guys, and keep, keep your eyes on Jesus. Well, Benjamin, I'm happy for you today. I'm excited for you. I wish you God's blessing as you move forward from here. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, in years gone by, I often looked at you and wondered, see you at church, you know, what's he going to make of himself? You know, I didn't know. Nobody knew. You were just this little guy. But today, <clears throat> I'm uh, glad that you're my friend, and I consider you a good friend. And I wish you God's blessings as you um, reach out into the community, you reach other people, and to promote Christ through your union today. <clears throat> and Susanna, I just got back from the airport, taking a guy down there, down to Eugene, and he told me something I never forgot. He's been married 32 years. He married his um, sweetheart of his youth. And he said, I was not a good guy. He said, I had a lot of problems. But he said, I uh, credit my wife for who I am today. So Santa, you have a lot of bearing on how Benjamin, um, who you can make him um, by God's grace. So on the light side, um, I was going to bring uh, Benjamin a gift, and uh, one day, <clears throat> I don't know how long ago it was, uh, there was a youth gathering, and um, I walked in, and uh, here they were discussing showering, and, and they were having this argument how to shower, and you know... And I was like, what? I mean, I, and all of a sudden, as I walked in the door, he says, well, there's Glenn. Ask him. 
And I'm like, what are these guys even talking about? I mean, they, so I said, what's the a, what's a question? So the question was, when you take a shower, do you wash your legs? That was the question. I'm like, what, what kind of discussion we got going here? And some felt, you know, they did and some didn't. And Benjamin, he just, this had to be done. Well, a couple, uh, about two weeks ago, I was at his uh, apartment where he was at going to live. And I seen that shower stall. And I'm like, we got a problem. <laughs> and so at home, my youngsters, we were talking about all this. Like, how's this going to work? You know, there are, this shower stall is like, how big is it? Well, you might, you might be okay. But I was like, how are you going to navigate in this thing? So I was going to buy you a stack brush. That way you could stand up and, you know, like to wash stacks of trucks. So I actually went to Sure Clean to buy this stack brush. And I was going to get a telescoping handle. I was just going to get it all set up for you. That way you didn't poke through the drywall. But they were out. So... I was going to give that to you today so that way you could, you know, you didn't have to open the door or, you know, that little tiny shower stall. I thought it would just be the perfect fit, you know, from a two-inch stack to a, you know, one size fits all. Okay? But God bless you. In defense of that shower stall, just so you all know, it fits the bathroom, and that's the important thing, right? Whether it fits people, I don't know, but it fits the bathroom. It's a tiny little room. I look over the crowd, and there's just so many people that I know that had a part in their lives. Hey, guys. I am so excited to be here. Like, I think it's always been like on my list of things I looked forward to doing is go to Benjamin's wedding. Am I good? Okay. <laughs> Um, because, as other people have mentioned, he talked about it a lot. Um, and so it's good to be here. And I admire both of you a lot. Um, Suzanne, it's been great knowing you these past few years. Like, you're a lot different than me. You're very quiet, so sweet, and so servant-like. And I've always admired you and looked up to you. Um, and. Benjamin, one time I had an assignment in college. I was supposed to give an impromptu speech on an example of a good leader. And I remembered, like, growing up with you, you were always so good at admitting when you were wrong and apologizing. And that still sticks with me. And you were the first person I thought of. So I can't wait to see what God's going to do with you, too. And congratulations. Well, everyone's telling me to say something, so <laughs> I guess here we go. Um, I've known Benjamin for a very long time. Um, growing up, I got a lot of memories with Benjamin, doing lots of things together. One of the things we did a lot was travel. Um, we kind of worked together. We would go with large groups, youth group and different things, and um, we would, we'd work together. He would have his things he was in charge of. I'd have my things we had in charge of, and it worked pretty good. Um, I remember, I think it was our first year going to Bible school together, we arrived at the place where we were staying and started, I think it was pretty late in the evening, so we were getting ready to go to bed, and um, I, I, I don't remember if it was myself or someone else that was along, we had forgotten a comb, and Benjamin said, oh, no problem, he had an extra one, and I said, or, or he said, no problem, you can use mine, and I, and, and I said, well, Benjamin, what are you going to do for yourself? He said, well, I actually have another comb. In fact, I actually brought six combs just to make sure I had enough, uh, so... Yeah, anyways, I remembered that. Um, I always thought well, if I ever forgot something, Benjamin would have it. Um, another memory, I was, I was thinking about Benjamin and Susanna, and one memory um, that came to my mind, this was quite a number of years ago, back when, um, like Teresa was saying, Benjamin was really into talking about the ideals of uh, courtship and marriage and what to look for in a young lady and different things, and usually it was pretty vague on specifically who he was interested in, but uh, once in a while, or, or this one memory I have, it kind of um, was a little bit different. He, uh, we were actually, well, I should first say, Benjamin, as mo many of you guys know, he has a um, habit of bringing up things at the wrong time. Um, 
And uh, so we were, we were visiting another church at a volleyball game, actually, and we were lined up to number off. And he um, made it known that he wanted to fill me in on some of the, I don't know, things he had been thinking about recently, including um, this whole subject. And so I was like, Benjamin, please, like, really, this is not the time. Like, a different time, maybe I should act like I don't know you, I don't know. And uh, he was like, no, he really wanted to chair with me. And pretty soon I, he kind of came across that he w there was somebody specific that he thought was a good example of the things he had been talking about. And I was like, Benjamin, really, like, this is not the time. And finally he said, Dennis, I'll just look up in the corner of the room and I'll just say her name. It won't, you know, nobody will even know this person, it's fine. And I said, Benjamin, please. So he looks up in the corner and he says, Susanna Hall. And I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> but anyways, um, it looks like, yeah, it's worked out great for you. And I do agree. It's a very godly young lady and I think you've chosen well. So um, congratulations to both of you. This is really good. Let's not end it now. I'm, I'm finding out all sorts of things about my son. This is, that's where all my combs went. Um, I, I, apparently, I don't need them anymore. I don't know. Okay. Ah, very good. My name is Graceful Huntford. I really love the Gusty family. And I just was, I was remembering that when Benjamin was a little boy, he was a kind of a romantic little boy. <laughs> and it was really cute. <laughs> As a, like, I think I was 16 when I was nannying for the Gussies for a little while. And um, mainly got to know the oldest four and the parents. I, I think that was when Bethany was born. Anyway, it was really, um, kind of cute as a as a teenager to like see how um, he was getting kind of emotional when it was like almost time for me to leave. <laughs> I was like, oh, he's really really feeling this. <laughs> he was on the floor playing with his truck, just kind of like you know feeling it. She's gonna leave us, <laughs> but all that all that sweetness um, God made for your girl, and I'm just so happy. Happy that that's going to go into your marriage, and don't don't lose it. <laughs> well, I wasn't planning on saying anything, but uh, a few things from. Hearing what others have said have uh, brought a few things to my mind. But uh, first of all, Benjamin and Susanna, congratulations. It's good to see you guys together, and uh, you guys have been a blessing to me. And uh, one thing Benjamin always talked about was spoiling his lady. And uh, it was always, I always thought it was kind of a funny thing. You know, you'd always talk about opening doors for her and all those things, which is special. And, uh, and that's good. And... Uh, and as has been said before, Susanna will definitely spoil you with her cooking. I remember coming from the fields uh, when it wasn't harvest or anything, uh, in time to eat supper with the family, and you could always tell it was Susanna's cooking. You'd smell it before you hit the door. Uh, it was always very good. Uh, you and I have talked a lot about your lady friend as long as I can remember. Uh, little did I know that for the majority of that, uh, you were referring to pro probably my sister. And uh, I had to wonder after you started dating, was he probing for cues in his, as he would put it, investigation and trying to get me to give some clues, which I was, I'm not sure how good I did with that. I'll talk to you later about that. Um, uh, but it was an honest one. You kept it a secret and I don't feel like she heard, knew anything about it. Nobody else did. And uh, I want to, bless you for that and I appreciate and look up to you for that uh, it was very good and uh, those talks were great and uh, it's even better seeing it become a reality for you and for you for her and 
God bless you both as you serve the Lord together. Thinking five more would be a good round number of sorts. So look out over this crowd. There's so many people that have touched our lives over the years. See Benjamin's tax preparers here. Maybe they would you prepare this? You know, okay. They're retiring this year anyway, so that's fine. <laughs> okay. Well, the one of the neatest things is that they're they're staying in the community, and I would expect that they would, um, they would look favorably upon any advice, that they would appreciate any prayers, happen to remember them. Uh, they have no plans of moving to Montana, that I know of. No? Okay. Were you going to say something? Okay. Well then, I think I'm going to leave the mic open just a little bit longer. You guys can talk quietly. If somebody feels like a real burden to say something, I don't want to make sure, I want to make sure that we don't miss out on that wisdom or that experience or that story. But the mic won't be open for too much longer. So, very good. Thank you very much for your participation. And again, you're welcome to come up here for a few more minutes. At about 2.10-ish, I'm going to turn the mic over to the, to the couple for them to say anything that they need to say. But in the meantime, we can, we can go back to talking for a bit. Or somebody stumps up to the mic, everybody hushes, right? Very good. All right. Well, that was a short-lived, uh, short 10 minutes there. Uh, at any rate, <laughs> so the couple does have a few words to say. Uh, I invite them up to the mic at this point. After that, we're going to start closing down. And just so you know what the schedule is, by 3.30, I believe, the plan is to have this place completely cleaned out and ready for a 4.30 youth event. So at 4.30, uh, the youth is invited, are invited back for a volleyball game, but at three, up until 3.30, everybody's invited to put away chairs, put away the garbage, wrap everything up, um, or you're welcome to move on. Very good. Well, <clears throat> we just want to thank you all for sharing in our special day. Uh, Thank you for the effort that you put into it. I know many of you are come from out of state uh, and some locals, but it's very special to have every one of you here. And thank you for the cooks and all the work that was done, the coordinators. Um, there was a lot of people who uh, put in a lot of time and effort here. So 
just thank you for uh, sharing in our special day. And uh, you can be dismissed now.